Hey guys, Big Square Road to Rue.com. We have the lovely, the very sexy man in Texas, Will Lair for Perpetual Assets. Will, as our world tumbles and hurdles its way through space, it feels like everything has gone crazy. What what's going on in your world and why why should we be aware of everything right now? Yeah, indeed. Uh things have gone crazy. And I talk to people regularly on a regular basis, <clears throat> like-minded folks. I am, I am blessed that my uh, that my that my profession allows me to talk with like-minded people every day. And um, yeah, it's a recurring sentiment. What the hell is going on? You know, um, you hear about the uh, the student loan debt relief. Oh yeah, that was three hundred billion. Of- uh, they're expecting the total to be 500 billion because they're not making anybody pay right now either. It's like, wow, where in the Constitution does the president have the ability to forgive debts? I mean, can can the president forgive all debt in the United States? That's such a political move. I mean, think it's, about it. That's such a like did that right after the uh, the new the new IRS agent hiring. 87,000 agents or something. I mean, is this even real? And then did you see the video of them training with their firearm training? With firearm. These are like the most pathetic looking accountant types ever. One guy was in a wheelchair. It makes you think, are they doing this on purpose for another reason? To raise outrage. Yes, because in in that video, at the end of it, you hear him saying, sir, you're under arrest for conspiracy. I don't know if it was conspiracy to commit something, but all you heard was that's what you heard in the interview. And there's people chatting about it online. I'm like, man, this is this is theater. But it, this is but theater. it came it came from the IRS, right? The IRS uh, YouTube website. I think so. I think so. Yeah, man. It's um, it could be to incite. I mean, that's what uh, you know. As this regime falls apart. They uh, they want to inc- they want another January sixth, right? They want to incite the patriots to come out there and you know do something stupid. I, Not this time. I don't know. I mean, there's so many things. Um, let's let's keep this one um, on the uh, public side. Well, at least we'll try to. If we're yeah. not able to, we're not able to. Let's talk about uh, silver coinage these days. You're knee deep in the silver world. Um, we're looking at monster premiums for the uh, uh, the Silver Eagles. I mean, beyond anything anybody can comprehend. I I have always been a huge buyer of Silver Eagles, but I haven't bought Silver Eagles in a long time because the, the premiums are just so off the charts. Um, and this is not, here's the other thing, this is not a premium rise coming from the U.S. Mint. They're not allowed legally to raise their prices above the cost of making the coins. So who is it? Who Who's, I mean, is, is it just lack of coins that they're making? Because they aren't even close to making what they're supposed to, what they're capable of making. I'll get to that in a second. But what do you yes. think it is that's causing the premiums to rise? It's a complete uh, supply demand mishap. You have increasing demand tremendously and they can't they can't fill it. I mean, you're going to go over that number in just a minute on their actual production year to date. Uh, we've seen I've been a, I've been in the metals business now on the dealer side for 15 years, and we've seen a couple of these events through over the years. There was a summer maybe five, six, seven years ago where you know silver was probably like fifteen dollars or sixteen dollars, and it had one of its overnight Sunday night crashes, you know, to like fourteen. I know, and them. and that caused this. That was maybe 2016 or something. That caused one of these snaps in the supply side. A whole bunch of buyers rushed in. The mint couldn't keep up with demand, and it always starts with eagles because they're the most popular bullion coin in the world. So there's the most demand for it, and it only has this one supply vector or supply line, which is the U.S. mint and their ability to source blanks, and so. What happened in this summer 2016 or somewhere around there, <clears throat> the price dipped, demand came in, snapped up all the eagles, backlogged all the wholesale orders, and then the premiums jack. At that point, they were, you know, five and six dollars for eagles and delays. There were one, two month delays on eagles. We wouldn't even touch them. We wouldn't sell them. I won't sell it if it's not in stock. 
But um, I thought that was it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is going to break. Everything's going to break. And they they jacked premiums. They waited for demand. They culled demand. That sent demand out into other products, bars and rounds, which also experienced an increase in premium, not as severe though. Um, and then the supply catches up and then they're able to lower. So that was, this has happened a few times where we've seen the Eagles premium spike, but this time we're running on two and a half years now. Okay. Years ago when this would happen, it would be a month to three month long event. Maybe we're two and a half years in since COVID COVID hit. And that's when that's when everything crashed. And then, of course, demand came in again, rushed up all the physical silver and the Eagles premiums shortly after right after that were six bucks. Um, that might have been on the wholesale side. So you're looking at, you know, seven or whatever, eight on the retail side. Um, in fact, the last purchase I made, I bought maples some time ago because I wasn't paying six or seven over for, for Eagles and the maples I could still get for you know two or three or whatever at the time. Um, now, of course, the maples have now the Eagle premium has gone in the last 12 months. It's $12. It's now 12. It's almost $13 on the wholesale side. On retail side, you're seeing $15 premiums on Silver Eagles. Um, it's insane. It's criminal because they're supposed to meet to be able to meet demand. It's clearly reflective of a much larger, dare I say, conspiracy of, I mean, the U.S. dollar, the hegemony of the U.S. dollar, a very powerful industry, in order for it to maintain its power, silver and gold have to be suppressed and controlled. The price, the supply, the bullion banking, I mean, it goes all the way down, right? So this is just another one of those examples where they manipulate premiums. I don't know if the mint's doing it. I don't know if the wholesalers are doing it. I don't think the wholesalers are buying at $2 over and then selling to the public or to the, to the, to the retail chains, I should say. Well, they Wholesale are lines required. Well. Well, here's here's where we get into you know whose fault is it? <clears throat> the uh, U.S. Mint is required by law to sell uh, eagles first of all to meet demand, which they aren't. But even though they're required by law, the pricing of those eagles is the cost to produce them. There mm -hmm. is not supposed to be any zero profit on producing the silver eagles, and that's right. a, what it says in the law. And I don't I don't think they do. Bake in profit. They bake in profit on all their other, uh, you know, their specialty coins and, you know, super high relief type yep. shit. But um, the law actually states, one, it states that they're numismatic coins, which is really interesting. I was reading it the other day, and it it does say that silver eagles and gold eagles are are legally classified as numismatic coins. Now, numismatic is that odd term that nobody really can you know, say, well, it means collectors or it means uh, made by a government or it means the, the only reason to have numismatic out there, <clears throat> that word, is that they thought back in 1933, 1934, when they were confiscating um, gold, the gold eagles, um, they thought numismatic coins were not subject to that, collector's mm -hmm. type. It didn't say mm -hmm. numismatic, it actually said collector's type. But numismatic is in the law for silver eagles. So everything that the mint sells, well, not everything. I mean, the other stuff, I, I don't know if you'd call it numismatic or not, but for silver eagles and gold eagles, it is classified as numismatic in the law. Um, but besides that, I'm going to do a screen share here. And then I'm going to read you something. Um, where's a screen share? All right, can you see that? Yep. So this is what the U.S. Mint is doing this year. This is gold over here. Look at look at the production in gold. First, number of gold coins sold right here. Um, they go from 427,000. These are uh, one ounce, half ounce, all eagles, a quarter ounce, and a tenth ounce. Um, mm -hmm. 427 down to 115, 240. And then all of a sudden, it started dropping. 122 and then up to 229 and look what happened in the last two months 190 and all of a sudden 86,000 and then they cut it that in half 45,000 Andy Sheckman told me that they had an, they had told their dealers that they're cutting their uh gold eagle supply in half why 
I mean, they're not required by law to make gold eagles, only silver eagles. But look at the silver eagle production this year. Five million in January. Now that's got to do with you have December when they shut down for some crazy reason every December just to change the dyes for the new ones. But um, so five million that and that's not out of out of the park. That's like that's a good month, but it's not out of the park. And but look what happened after February. Remember, this is a time when people are paying $15 over spot, which is the most ridiculous thing to pay. That's like 60 something percent premium. You got February down to 1.5, March to one, April to 850,000, May they jumped a little to 1.3, and then it started just the pure decline, 925, 850, and 450 in August. Basically, they're stopping production at a time when demand for silver eagles has never, ever, ever in the history of the United States been greater. Now, let me put some of this in context. From 2008 to 2016 was the largest, and, and those, those dates should ring a bell, was the largest amount of silver eagles ever sold. That, that time frame tripled, tripled. There was an extra 300 million eagles sold during that eight-year time frame. During that time frame, J.P. Morgan was rigging the price of silver lower. J.P. Morgan was also an authorized dealer of silver eagles and was taking product from the U.S. Mint. The U.S. Mint had no problem, no problem producing. One year they produced, I think it was 47 million silver eagles with the vast majority of that going to J.P. Morgan. How come... JP Morgan gets to buy Eagles that back then it was what two dollars over spot. Yep. Was, was the premiums that were being paid. And they got them in massive quantities. And then today they can't even, I mean, right now that you're looking at 11.9 million ounces. And remember, their capacity, they have done in the past 48, 49 million coins in one year. Yes, that was a busy year, but it, it means that they have the capacity to do it. Why aren't they doing it? Especially, and that was at the $2 premiums. Yep. Now we have $15 premiums and they're only allowing, you know, right now 12,000 to be made and we're halfway, more than halfway through the year. This mm -hmm. is insane. All this got me riled up because I got this letter. Wait, let me, let me end the screen share. I got this letter from the U.S. Mint. My good old friend, Ventress Gibson. Now, Ventress Gibson is the uh, is the director of the Mint. She took over. Um, it's interesting because David Ryder was the old director. David Ryder came back from, he was a director back when Bush was uh, president, and then he became director again. He's the guy who made the change on the Silver Eagles to, to the notch thing on the bottom. Um, but he left back in July for some unknown reason. And Vitrus Gibson became the head of the Mint. Vitrus Gibson was, has never worked at a Mint in her life. Her entire career is in the um, HR department of the U.S. government. She's, she is a, a highly specialized human resources professional. Escape what up. is she doing as the head of the Mint? And she can't even make the Silver Eagles. But listen to what she said. Now, this is uh, to a valued U.S. Cus a valued customer. I'm a customer of the U.S. Mint. I've bought some of the commemorative coins from them. Uh, at the U.S. Mint, we take pride in the focus we apply to customer satisfaction. Are any Silver Eagle uh, buyers satisfied these days? I don't think so. We continually strive to improve our your experience with us. We have listened to what you've told us about how to improve our customer service delivery, and we've made significant improvements. For example, we have recently enhanced and stabilized our website. Oh, good job, Vitrus. You can't make an eagle, but you can stabilize your website. We appreciate your continued patience as we work to increase numismatic production amid unprecedented demand for circulating coins. Staffing shortages during the global pandemic and supply chain issues. Now, first of all, the pandemic is over. There should be no staffing shortages. Second of all, the vast majority of these coins, the, the, the production of these coins is all mechanical now. 
all these CNC machines, all they they really don't do much. They supervise the machines is all they really do. And how much of our silver is sourced domestically? I mean, when it's talking about the supply chains. Well, it that's well, that's the thing. In the law, they are required to source silver from anywhere in the world. Gold uh-huh. they have to source from the United States of America. Okay. Um so and the way that the US mint sources and i've I've dug into this because someone said well no they they can't get the blanks that's not Mm -hmm. true the way the u.s mint um mints these eagles is they buy comex bars and then they have the so that's the price they pay they pay Mm -hmm. spot price off the comex then they have them processed and that's the markup that they have to give up at sunshine 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 is the main one but here's here's the other thing people say oh no sunshine mint's got issues and difficulties so many of the big uh, sovereign mints get their coins from Sunshine Mint and other mints, but nobody else other than the U.S. is having problems with their sovereign coin availability. Mm-hmm. So the Canadian mint, not a problem. Australia, not a problem. England, not a problem. But the United States of America, we have this massive problem. And we're the only ones, we're the only country with a law that says you have to supply these coins in in uh quantities to meet demand you have seen we ha- we have seen a spillover into the maples i mean maples used to be two three bucks now they're six seven eight right yeah but you can still get quantities <laughs> i mean clearly there's an issue with clearly and i would love to know if it is the mints that are that are i know they're not raising it as much for the eagles but how much more are the mints charging because the u.s mint is not allowed to charge anything over cost I can't imagine. I mean, I, I, I've worked with these wholesalers for 15 years now. And um, I mean, unless they're all in collusion with one another, which is certainly possible and say, but this appears to be more of a, again, a mitigation of demand. They're trying to, they, they can't meet demand with supply. So they have to mitigate that somehow. And that's what it appears to be. It doesn't appear to be collusion amongst all the major six wholesalers that are saying, hey, let's let's buy them for two bucks from the mint and jack them up to 12 and a half to all of our distributors, me well, and everybody else. It's, it's clear that they're not making enough. I mean, they've only get, made 12 million this year when so, demand has never been greater. For you, and this is a perfect storm. This what is a perfect would the storm, demand yeah. for Eagles be if the premium was something normal, like $4 over spot? Yeah. I mean, they would be selling tens of millions of silver eagles every month yeah the amount of spillover that's gone into what was maples and now we're selling 100 ounce 100 ounce uh royal canadian mint bars because they're serial numbered the royal canadian mint has the highest security standards in the world and they're three four bucks over spot you know you can also get the buffaloes and the generic rounds for that too if you want if you want individual coins but uh, yeah i'm not touching 15 14 dollar over eagles it's it's insane it's crazy Okay, <clears throat> how how should we go from here into what we think is happening to our system? Is our entire system breaking down? Is it is it a, a situation where the U.S. Mint knows we're going to have to go to a gold and silver standard, and they're they're I mean they're I was looking at the cost for um, the the cost structure of the mint. Like maybe they fired everybody during COVID. They didn't fire anybody during COVID. So what are these people doing who work for the Mint? If they're not making eagles, what are they doing? Or are they making eagles and stockpiling them and other types of of gold and silver coins, stockpiling them for the new monetary system that's about to roll out? Dude, the silver silver story is so, I mean, you go back in the Charles Savoy and you read all, you go deep down the silver rabbit hole. And it's such, it's such an incredibly mystical asset. I mean, who knows, man, I I wouldn't, anything goes, but I think if you pay attention to what's happening right now, this is, this is the unraveling of the old system and the transition into something new, whatever that is. And there's a lot of financial underpinnings that are going to, that are part of that. Um, the, the, the physical silver market is one of them. And I think it's probably one of the most incredible in the world, what we're going to, what we're going to witness happen. It's already happening. I mean, this, this, yeah, this, again, we're two and a half years into 
Eagle premiums now at 60% and rising. The, the Texas millionaire or billionaire who bought all that stuff last month, and, I, and I, we, were, we were talking about it in Austin when I was hanging out with you and Andy, uh, he was he told, he said, I, I, I bat, he bought, he went to every single wholesaler, all six of them, except for the ones he didn't like, and I know he's talking about, and, and, he, and he, uh, he backed up all the supply lines. That one trade backed up all the supply lines two weeks now they're back down to about a week. I'm talking just eagles, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not an Apmex with you know ten million dollars in inventory sitting in eagles or whatever that number is, you're waiting two weeks to get them. Uh, that backed up major wholesale lines. One one trade. So yeah, I mean I think this is this <clears throat> is the unraveling. So you gotta. I mean you got to get your get your assets out, protect your assets. Um, but that's. That's the other amazing thing. You know, we well know <clears throat> of this monster, monster silver eagle order that soaked up all the basically all the silver eagles that were available, and a couple of weeks into the production uh, mm -hmm. or the uh, the uh, delivery schedule, and yet you look at you look at these numbers. Let's look at it again. Premium just went up again. The wholesale <clears throat> side premium since that order jumped almost a dollar. So look, 60 cents. but look, they're, they're yeah. making, they're not making more. They're making less. They're making half as much as they made in July. This I mean, could be the straw that left. breaks. This the is, that this breaks is the camel's back. This Vitres, one buyer. Vitres Gibson. I, I need to have buyer a buyer has the intent to buy a whole lot more too. And it's probably going to attract other billionaires. I mean, it's just, this reminds me of that wall street silver thing remember a year or two ago and it, you had all these reddit guys and youtube or twitter guys going buy an ounce of silver yeah. and crash the banks and a whole bunch of people rushed on it but that was kind of reminds it, me of that only with the big dogs it, it it you know to me during that time it, it it did an amazing thing it brought a whole bunch of new people into silver which is great it was not the reason the price was going up there was a there was a it's not a hedge fund it was um i forgot the name of it they bought uh, one third of SLV. Oh wow! And I'm like screaming about it and showing people the data. These guys bought three hundred or a uh, yeah. There's a third, so it was two hundred. They brought two hundred million shares of SLV, which is one ounces. third of yeah. The 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 inventory was six hundred million, so it was one third of the inventory. Um, but nobody wanted to talk about that. I. I told Ted Butler about it. He's like, eh, I don't believe the data. Well, this is directly from the SEC. You wow. people have to, you know, you have to tell your position if you have a large position. Mm -hmm. um, and then they sold it over the next two months. The, the problem now, there is big stuff going on behind the scenes, so much bigger than what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because the Bank of America lease of JP Morgan's silver, it was 1.2 billion ounces. I mean, you look that, at the that, that JP Morgan, those eagles that you were talking about, the JP Morgan. Well, no, I, I think two years. It, it's not. Ted Butler seems to think that the the large chunk of eagles, I figured it's around 300 million ounces. Um, he thinks that they they melted them down and turned them into Comex bars because, what? well, because they didn't care about eagles, but they do care about the Comex delivery. delivery. Wow! But wow, so that they mean, just ate that two dollars an ounce. Well, that, how many? I mean, that's not the big thing to me. That's completely illegal to melt down a U.S. currency. No kidding. So, yeah. I mean, if they did do that, they're in a hell of a lot more trouble than you know. They, I wouldn't put anything past them, Vix. I mean, we know what the stuff oh, that I they know. do in dark I know. places. I can't even fathom I, what they I do in the would, monetary system. I, I think it I would mean, be, it, it'd be important for the future of the U.S. currency to understand that if 300 uh, million silver eagles were taken out of the overall total, yeah. you know, when, when we go to a gold and silver standard, we, ne we need to know how many eagles are out there. Mm -hmm. And if, if it is proven that, say, they melted down 300 million, not only should they go to jail, but what would that do to the value of the the eagles in general? You know, I I haven't added up the total amount of eagles that have ever been made. It's probably close to a billion, but taking away thirty percent of that, I mean, you're looking at a supply demand issue again. I'm just another. I was just thinking about that right now. Just another feather in the hat for 
silver and silver eagles. So unbelievable, man. But uh, but right now the biggest thing is that is the lease to J- to Bank of America, um, the uh, OCC, the Office of Control of Currency, changed how the data is reported to hide what was going on. I think that the uh, all that silver is being re-delivered right now, and I think it's going to Warren Buffett. Hmm. I have many reasons to believe that. Um, I've been looking for the Buffett move for a long time, knowing mm-hmm. him, knowing his father, knowing mm-hmm. what he did in the nineties and how they stopped him in the nineties. This time I, in his, his interest in bank of America, he, he basically took all his, uh, bank, uh, investments. He took them out of Goldman, out of, uh, JP Morgan, out of everybody and put them all into bank of America. Yeah, and everybody's like, right. What's so great about bank of America. And then we learned 18 months ago that bank of America was, uh, getting all the JP Morgan, uh, silver lease to them. Now I, I'm very aware of, uh, yeah. lease. I was in leasing for 25 years and banking. You can structure a back end any way you want of a lease. You don't have to return the metal. You could have right. a thick purchase option. You could you can have a, a zillion different ways. It's like a smart contract. You can write yep. a contract any way you want at the end of a lease. Um, I I believe that uh, J P Morgan was told you have to divest yourself of this silver that you stole during the eight years you were suppressing the price of silver. Mm-hmm. That's when Blythe Masters was in there. Um, you have to get rid of that silver. I think that's the way they went through Bank of America. Ending up at Buffett, who I think is going to return it to the U.S. Treasury. Mm-hmm. We will see, but um, I, I I hope we will see. I hope that the truth comes out about um, all this stuff. But right now, yeah. right now, it's just it's so glaringly obvious that the regulators and the the OCC, especially Office of Comptroller of Currencies, the number two guy, is is the guy really in charge, and he's a J.P. Morgan guy. So yeah, it's it's and and BlackRock running SLV right now. SLV has the largest short position ever, at like forty nine million shares, which is forty nine million ounces that they were supposed to deposit. People have shares in SLV that they think that they own a sh- and one ounce of silver because that's what it says in the prospectus. You don't. You mm-hmm. absolutely don't. If you have shares in SLV, get the hell out as fast as possible. That 49 yeah. million ounces, how, where are they going to get that? Where are they going to get that to put in? Uh, as, they're just going to have to keep shorting it until something the, breaks. The rush the rush into tangible assets. I mean, we, we've we we've been early, right? Um, but it, it, it's starting to crescendo. And can you imagine as, as the alarm bells continue to go off, um, it, it's get the silver while you still can. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cryptos, I mean, I, I, you know, it, it – I'm I'm a big advocate of both uh, physical physical silver and and cryptos in cold storage. Uh, it's a good diversifier. Now's a great time to buy you know cryptos. There's you blood like, in the streets. You know what I I, I was thinking the other day because <clears throat> I I'm I a big advocate of hey silver has been suppressed for 170 years since the opium wars. When silver runs, it's going to blow any crypto away because it's not like just greed. It's people saying, oh my god. Mm -hmm. JP Morgan's gone. The bankers are gone from the silver market and it will only take like one ounce, the next ounce that gets sold for the price to go to try to find what fair market value is. But after that, when when a a silver exchange is started after all this bullshit, a new silver exchange is started, the comics is shut down, all that happens. I am going to be the biggest buyer, seller of crypto or of silver and buyer of cryptos. Because cryptos mm-hmm. are our future. So, yep. I mean, I know so many people who don't fully under have a lot of silver and gold, but don't fully understand cryptos yet. Mm-hmm. I say, hang on to your stuff until you get fair market value for your metal. And then you got to yeah. dive in to the future of money. If or when we have a blow off, huge revaluation of silver. It can't uh, happen. Though. Of- it can't happen if these exchanges are open. I mean, you've got uh, what's it, two hundred and twenty? I think two hundred twenty million sh- short position by the banks. Mm. If you have a a, a revaluation, it, it only, all those banks are gone. Yeah, it only coincides with the crash of the system or right. the or the 
crash of the dollar or the revalue, whatever the hell they're about to do or is about to take place. You know, so and and, and we've said that for quite some time. Silver is only going to fly when the system goes, you know, um, but when it does and it creates these incredible new highs and you have silver and gold investors that are going to have incredible amounts of new wealth, you're, it's going to be time to diversify some of that. You know, you just same with cryptos. If you bought Ethereum at $7 and then it went to 300 or whatever, whoa, okay, I need to shave some off and put it elsewhere. So that's, yeah, I mean, that's definitely viable it's uh, coming it's coming yeah we it is I, i've been yeah. screaming about the other way around you know as you make your crypto profits definitely buy silver try to balance your portfolio with silver and, i think uh, you were the first uh i literally do i think you were the first person to invest in cryptocurrency with a retirement account because we did your we did your ira back in 2014 probably um Yes, Bitcoin was around then, but we were just doing the IRAs mostly for, for, for metals, mm -hmm. land, private equity and metals, because you can use the IRA for anything, as you know. Uh, and then I think, in fact, you, you probably gave me the idea. Holy crap, this platform is amazing for crypto. You know, yeah. and, uh, and anyway, all, I had that. all your trades, you don't get taxed until you start taking that money out at retirement. So mm -hmm. you don't get, you know, you don't have to worry about the IRS. Yeah, the new what There's is no how capital new, gains? How many new agents does the IRS have coming in? Eighty seven thousand. Yeah, armed. Fuck it, crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, well, tell people how one to get silver through you guys, because I, and what you yeah. bring in. We do a few different things. So number one, we're a precious metals dealer. So. Uh, we can source silver and gold. Uh, we are an IRA facilitator. We set up that self-directed IRA that allows you to access your, your old 401k or your IRA, get it out of the mutual funds and the market and everything else and get it into physical assets that you control, metals, cryptos, land, whatever. Uh, you can do it all under the platform. And then we're also a cryptocurrency dealer as well, or operate that trade desk. So we kind of have those few different things that we do, but, uh, yeah, uh, look us up, perpetualassets.com. Give us a call, 888-281-2630. Bix knows that one. Uh, it's been a while I used to always say it wrong. I, I used to say it wrong all the time, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a while since we've done a YouTube video. I know. You have a, your YouTube audience has grown considerably. So, um, yeah. And yeah, and we've been... We, you know, when we do ours, usually uh, we're we're kind of off the uh, acceptable stuff. This is very acceptable for YouTube. I'm going to put this on the public page. They should not have a problem with it. Um, definitely, as Cliff High says, at some point, silver becomes unobtainium. I love that word. Unobtainium means any price, any price you won't be able to get it. Right now, we're seeing 60% premiums on Silver Eagles. And that, if, if you would have told me that 10 years ago, I'd say you're crazy. Yep. But the next move is unobtainium. I, I think that that's, said, Bix, we've always said for a long time, you're going to eventually, you're going to have two prices of silver. You're going to have a paper price and then a physical price. And we're already there. We're literally already there. And it's, and it's diverging even further. Um, yes. I'm very excited about that. Um, Will Lair, Perpetual Assets, you guys want to get some silver, get some cryptos. Figure out your uh, your retirement accounts. Give Will a call and uh, he'll take care of you. Will, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for having me, Dix. And uh, everybody press on out there. It's a crazy world, but at least we have each other. We can, uh, you know, grab each other by the, by the collar right. and pull us along. <laughs> Group hug. Thank All you, right. brother. Thank you. Talk to you later. Cheers, man. Bye-bye.